You would. Would you take a shotgun to hunt up? Yes. Would you take an AR weapon too? No. Why? I mean, them hogs are out there, right? Well, they don't usually come in a dove field when you're shooting dove. So oh. I, I don't know. I just you you just wouldn't, uh, Mr. Uh, Hartpootlian, uh, typically. I mean, but daytime, you're riding around the property. You got a shotgun. You got a slug in that shotgun, or you using bird shot? Uh, you would shoot um, bird shot. Okay. So if a hog came up, nothing you could do. If a hog came into a dove field with a bunch of dove hunters, well, maybe they would shoot way. at him regardless. <laughs> Maybe you're on your way to the dove field. You don't. The dove field's not right next to the house, is it? Uh, it's yes. It's right within a few a couple, few hundred yards. Boarded by the swamp. The swamp's on one end of it. Yeah. Okay. And where do the hogs live during the day, primarily? Well, they can live in the swamp. They can live in a bay. You know, it could be anywhere, but largely in the swamp. The swamp. So a hog could have come out of that swamp. Yes. And you were unarmed. As I said, if a hog came in a dove field near somebody dove hunting, they would probably shot it with bird shot. Would that kill a hog? If, if it was close enough, but, okay. but unlikely. But unlikely. So you have, in fact, ridden around Moselle without a gun to kill a hog, appropriate gun to kill a hog. Well, yes, if I was going over to the dove field, I wouldn't have one. But you, you've never ridden as Paul and Alec did that afternoon, just looking at different, like where deer, deer they, what do they call them? Where they plant stuff for deer? Food plots? Yeah. Um, or um, looking around at uh, how these fruit trees were doing. Remember the, the um, Snapchat video? I, the I've never uh, done that with Alec and uh, that, that I recall, but it, I could have in the past, but I, I don't have a specific recollection. Or where they planted some corn for, I guess you use corn for deer and ducks? Uh, you do, but you don't plant them in the same spot. No, I, I, I get that. Uh, one would be near a pond or in a pond or around a pond. Correct. They had a duck pond. Right. And then the others would just be out where the deer might come out and try to feed. Right. I, look, we don't need to go there. <laughs> yeah, I don't think. Yeah. Okay. But... Um, you've never rode around like that with them, looking at different plantings and that you that you remember. I don't have a specific recollection of doing that with Alex. Okay, but, but and would you? You're not telling this jury that they would not do. They would not. They would do that with, uh, without a um, blackout. Uh, they could. I mean, would it bother you or offend you or scare you that he, they're riding around the property during the daytime without the blackout? No, I, I was answering questions about what's normal if you're looking for hogs or if you're just riding my property. Um, I mean, most people carry a gun, but no, I, I have no idea what they had with them or what they were doing. And I think Al testified they were looking for signs of hogs because you could come back. It'd be a lot easier to find those hogs at night, right? They come out more likely at night than they do during the day. They can become nocturnal when they have a lot of pressure, but I've, I, like, as I said before, I've shot. A, I mean, we've shot a lot of hogs in the daytime. Sure. You can ride up on them, and and yeah. But does anybody has anybody testified they were out looking to shoot hogs that afternoon? I don't know what all the testimony's been in this okay. this trial. All I'm saying is there seems to be some implication they would not ride around the property without an AR or some sort of blackout. You, you can't testify to that, right? I cannot. Okay. So let's let's talk a little bit about what you heard from Alec the night of June seventh. Um, you would agree with me that. Um, well, let's ask it this way: What your practice is primarily personal injury? Is that correct? It is catastrophic injuries. Well, I, I handle a lot of catastrophic injury cases. Cases, for instance, where. Uh, a husband and wife are riding down the road and hit by a tractor trailer. And by way of example, maybe you could give me something more specific. Husband's killed, wife's severely injured. That kind of thing. Yeah. Now, is it your experience in people who undergo, maybe they're not hurt, but their loved one is hurt, maybe killed, um, in that situation, that's a traumatic experience for the surviving person, correct? To see their loved one killed? Yes. Okay. 
And so when you sit down with those folks and be, you know, begin to recount with them, what happened that night? Oftentimes, I do a little work like you do, um, oftentimes those folks misremember or get times wrong or because they went through this very traumatic experience and the closer to that experience, the more likely they are to get some things wrong. Times, for instance. Is that your experience? They can, but I also find that uh, people who have been in, uh, involved in traumatic experiences try to be uh, very uh, try to be very accurate with the details because they know it's important to me representing them. And typically, you don't go out to the scene of the crime and interview or the scene of the accident and interview them that night, do you? Typically. Uh, well, typically you don't because you, you know you don't know it. That has happened. Um, well, sometimes in the old days they used to do that, but they don't do that anymore, right? It, th that would be very rare. So you're seeing them in your office weeks later? It, it can be. It can be days, can be weeks. Okay. And in that atmosphere, um, it's a little more conducive to them being as accurate as possible, right? It, it, it is, but, you know, oftentimes we also have the benefit of recorded interviews when there's a catastrophic injury. Typically the uh, highway patrol will get, try to interview people as quickly as they can, and they will, uh, we oftentimes have it on video off a dash cam or sometimes body cam, but, and, and a lot of times written statements. And written statements from witnesses that saw it happen. Correct. And so when you interview those people, they have the benefit of reviewing whatever you have to help them get a better recollection of what happened, correct? That's, that's correct. Okay. So the instance you're talking about where um, Alec told you he turned them over before um, he made the 911 call, whatever it was, I'm not quite sure. Before, I think, is what you said. Um, if that would be inconsistent with something he says later on, after having reviewed other people's statements, looking at video, um, that would not be unusual in your business. I think you just said it would not be unusual, correct? You, strike you, you, strike you, you, you're, you're trying to take me somewhere that you probably don't want to. Oh, I, 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 no, I think I want to answer the question. Withdraw the question. Let me ask you this question. Maybe this gets to the, to the meat of matter here. Have you had to come out of pocket to pay back the money he stole? Yes, and if how, you... How much? I, I, don't tell me you don't know. Well, we're still counting, Mr. Hartpoot. Well, how much have you paid so far? We have had to uh, borrow millions to pay back. No, how much have you had to come out of pocket? Well, when you borrow it, you got to pay it back, and I couldn't tell you how much has exactly been paid back uh, as of we sit here today. But and yes, and, and if you're implying that I would come in here and somehow shade truth in any way because of that, that's I would take high offense with that, Mr. Well, Hartpoot. I'm concerned about your high offense. Are you angry at him for stealing your money? I have no feeling one way or the you other. I don't have any feeling about Alec Murdoch betraying you and stealing your money. You're, I, I admire you. I don't know that I could look beyond that. Objection, Your Honor. Objection. It's sustained. It's not a question, the jury, is to disregard the argument. You are not angry with Alec Murdoch? I have had anger with him, extreme anger, Mr. Hart Putlin, because of what he did to my law firm, my partners, my client, his, his clients, our clients, what he did to his family, what he's did to so many people. Yes, I experienced a lot of anger. And but you can't anger. walk around with anger. You have to find a way to deal with it and move forward. And I have done that. And if you suggest you are dead wrong if you think I've come in here and told this jury something because of money. When we, we're talking about two people who were brutally murdered, then you're, you're, you're headed in the wrong direction. Do you think he did it? Do I, don't have, I don't have an opinion. I don't have the benefit of the materials you have. Well, let me ask you this. You're angry with him, stole millions of dollars from your firm. You admit your firm's not even called the Murdoch firm anymore, right? It is not. I don't admit that I'm angry right now. I told you I've gotten away from that. I don't have any feelings because you can't walk around with anger. I have been very, 
very angry about it because of what he's done. And he did it in a very callous way, a very deceitful way. And you carry no, I'm sorry, maybe I just saw some anger there. Were you angry just a moment ago? No, you keep trying to push a question and don't want to accept my answer, which is what it is. That you've just given your, your, your zen, your nirvana, your whatever the... Your Honor, objection. Mr. Harpootlin, I came to the scene of these murders to support my partner. I was there. I saw things that hadn't even been talked about in this courtroom. I was there. I, I, I love Paul very much. I thought I knew who Alec was. I did not. And it's hard to, 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 to you might not understand, but it's just it's hard to, to, to walk around with with anger and hard to even walk around with it when it's with somebody who you didn't know and didn't understand. So you 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 might have, have be that way, but you know I've got a function, I've got a family, I got to move on with life. Were you aware that he went to rehab in 2017? I was not, really? other than what what was said uh, by Alec in this courtroom. You never were aware he had a drug problem. I was unaware. Sort of. And, you, and, and if I would have been known, I would have tried to help him. You indicated that uh, he could be emotional in trying a case, correct? He, he could be. He, could, he was uh, theatric, much like his father and grandfather had a courtroom theatrics, uh, and, and he could be emotional. Any of your other partners that way? Johnny Parker? No, Johnny's quite the opposite. Johnny's very uh, Laconic, I believe, is the best yeah, way to describe yeah, he, it. He doesn't show emotion. Who, any, nobody else in your firm was theatric or emotional? Not to Ellick's uh, level. You don't know any other lawyers in the state that go to that level? You're asking me a question right now. I don't know. You might um, yourself. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what other lawyers do. I'm usually uh, trying cases against defense attorneys, so I don't, I don't get to see plaintiff's lawyers anymore. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for... Well, let me ask you one last thing. This Bullware guy that he stole all the money from? Mr. Bullware, remember him? Yes, I remember him. How much money did you steal from him? Do you remember? He stole 70-something thousand in June of 2018. Mr. Bullware died. In September, I believe, of 2018, and I believe another 270-something thousand after Mr. Bowers' death sometime in, uh, in or around February of 2019. Have you and your partners paid Mr. Bowers' estate or his folks back? Yes, I met with them personally. Okay. And even though it's cost you your firm and it's cost millions of dollars to you, you have forgiven him? You bear him I, no I, Ill, Ill. I didn't say I forgave him. You're just not angry about it anymore. I said I have no feelings. And, and I had to work on that, Mr. Hartpootlin. You know, it, it, when you go through what we've gone through, not only the trauma of losing people we loved in a double homicide, seeing the out aftermath and then learning that someone you've worked with for more than 20 years had been stealing for throughout a period of time and deceiving us, there's a lot of emotion there. And yes, it, it, it was bad in the fall of 2021, and I have found a way to have no feelings. It's not forgiveness, it's just I don't so have any angry here today. You're not angry at him I, at all. I'm, I'm not angry. If, okay. if, if I raise my voice, it's only because of the implication that you were trying to the make implication out of it. that you might not want to help him in front of this jury here today because. I, because let me finish the question. Because he destroyed your firm, he stole millions of dollars you had to pay back. Um, he deceived you. You've, all that's away and is not influencing your your uh, testimony here today at all. If you'd answer that yes or no, then you can explain. It, all those things happened, and it does not influence my testimony. I take the oath that I just took very seriously. And if you've got any indication that anything I said was inaccurate, I'll be glad to to, to address it with you. Well, the jury can judge that. Thank you. How long did you know Alec? Uh, since the late 90s.